Hi, I'm Steve Maletto from the Teaching, Learning, Leading K-12 podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Dutchko. Ninth grade can be challenging. Let's experience it together. And we're here to kick off the 2024 year with the latest episode of the podcast here. Uh, We're going to go back to one of our features from earlier in the year where we celebrate ninth grade experiences through the decades. Uh, In the beginning of the year in November, we had a feature from Dora Schaefer. Uh, who is 99 years old and was a freshman in the 1930s. And now we're going to have a, a representative from the 1940s as our next decade. Today we're going to focus uh, and share the story of Ruth Kemmerer. She was a freshman in 1945 46 school year, graduated in 1949. Her class is known as the 49ers. So I think that's a pretty cool uh, feature here. We're going to get to learn all about Ruth's. Uh, high school, ninth grade experience. Um, And there's a lot tied in with World War II, which I think makes it a really interesting story. Uh, You get to hear about all the different things that she did and was involved with here at Emmaus High School. So again, we're really excited to be partnering with the Emmaus Historical Society on these uh, trips through the past here and trying to talk to some of our people here in the community that have had very unique ninth grade experiences from back in the day. So you can go back and listen to Doris's episode here if you just go to ninth grade experience dot com and search for ninth grade experience through the decades or you can listen to any of our previous episodes with students that are currently in high school or maybe some that have recently graduated as well too. So again, you can find us at our website. Um, There are links there to listen to the audio podcast, links to the YouTube uh, podcast as well too. Uh, You can always find all of our stuff on TikTok at Ninth Grade Experience, on YouTube Shorts at Ninth Grade Experience, Instagram at Ninth Grade Experience as well too. So we're excited to continue this uh, mini feature here on the podcast and learning about ninth grade experiences through the years. So we're excited to bring you this story of Ruth Kemmerer. This will be our second in our series of exploring the history of Emmaus High School uh, in conjunction with the Emmaus Historical Society. So I'm really excited today um, to do my second interview. we are going through the years and through the decades as we go through. So today, uh, I'm really excited to be able to have a conversation here with Ruth Kemmerer. Um, Ruth is a graduate of Emmaus High School of 1949, and her freshman year was 1945, 1946 school year. So we're going to chat today, see what she remembers about her freshman year. We have pictures from her yearbook. We have lots of other cool stuff that we're going to talk about. So Ruth, thank you so much for taking the time out to join us today. You're welcome. So we actually were we were just talking before we started, and we had met and talked at the Emmaus Historical Society at one of the events that they do there. So I'm, I'm excited to be back in contact with you here. And like all of our guests that come onto the show for the first time, we ask them what their ninth grade experience was like. So what do you remember about your time at Emmaus High School from that school year of 1945-1946? Well, let's face it, back then, I was no, not Ruth Kemmerer, I was Ruth Wenner, W-E-N-N-E-R, and I lived in Emmaus at that time all my life. The, exper- the experience coming from Lincoln School and, of course, all the other schools that I attended in Emmaus were fantastic. I loved uh, learning and having reasonably good teachers and many good friends. But coming to Emmaus High School was a challenge. Number one, you want me to go into this from the beginning? Sure, yeah, we love to hear it. We, we want to hear all about what it was like for for you to kind of come into the high school. And I know we it was a definitely a night that, that 1945-46 time period, there was a lot going on in the country. In the as, world. In the yes. world, and you know, I think students kind of, I think would benefit from hearing what you what you experienced coming into high school. Well, I think as students, we were all challenged by the conditions of the World War II. And of course, my father was very involved. He belonged to a civic organization. 
and uh, we were kept abreast of what was going on. It was a bit frightening, to tell you the truth, but coming to the new high school was a challenge. But unfortunately, when I came to ninth grade, I was put into uh, just a general section because I did not take academics. I took uh, I wanted to be a secretary and learn how to type and do shorthand. And at that time, it was a challenge because they weren't set up for freshmen coming in for that. So at that time, I was stuck in the basement of the high school. We had to use the back stairs, not the front entrance of the high school, to come into a classroom uh, that was filled with whatever they had to do with whoever came into that building that did, they didn't know what to do with. So ninth grade was a challenge. Uh, we're stuck near the gymnasium. We could hear all the things going on in the gymnasium with the football, by the basketball practices. And uh, I had a teacher who evidently had been in the service and every oh, maybe every morning around 10 o'clock, he was served crackers and milk <laughs> because he had a condition, and yet he was there to teach us, and every afternoon the same thing happened. And yet we didn't quite understand at our age what was going on, but we tried to handle everything. But it was difficult. Like I said, most of my friends had gone into the academic sections, and they were upstairs. And uh, somehow I felt left out. And it, it's interesting because when we talked to Doris um, in our first episode about this, she talked to us about the process of like how they've grouped kids into like the four different kind of sections. Yes. And um, I you know, and, and we'll talk more about this as we ha I have a picture from your 1949 yearbook that you graduated in. And it listed for that point all the, the sections that the kids picked for, you know, which track we'll say they went into and it lists you as the secretarial so was there a reason that you picked that like because i know you could have picked from like an academic or a vocational or i, I know you said that you that's kind of where you thought you were going to go into but did you want to pick the academic and maybe you were told not to pick it it kind of seems like maybe you didn't necessarily want to be in the secretarial track well actually the bottom line was my parents were not wealthy like a lot of my friends family were and they could plan on going to college I knew when I graduated from high school I had to find a job and more or less help my family along as my sister did ahead of me unfortunately of course she got married right the same year she graduated so I was kind of uh, left in the family and I felt as though I'll be happy getting an office job and doing whatever I can learn in high school. And it did turn out well for me. So the, so you went through, so we'll kind of get into that as we go through, but you, so you entered this track, you said you were at the high school, you were kind of like in the basement, yes. as you're saying, and you kind of maybe didn't feel like, well, you know, a part of the school. So like, was there, did you actually, did they actually like, did you actually get to go into like the other parts of the school where you kind of kept into that spot? Like, no, how no. did, how did you get to be like a feel a part of the school? Well, actually, our classes were upstairs. Okay. Uh, and that's how we got to know how the high school looked and how we could perform. But we ha since we were in with thrown in with other classmates who were going different ways, it was difficult to feel what's a good word part of the high school. Like I say, ninth grade, and my marks kind of showed my ninth grade <laughs> marks showed I was a little unhappy because generally I was a very good student. I was not always on the A honor roll, but usually on the B honor roll. And I kept up my grades because my father was very much involved with my grades. And um, the report card was very important during our lives. I don't know how they... Well, everything's computerized today. Yep, they don't even get a paper copy of the report card anymore. Is that right? Well, yeah. believe me, that was the focus of me going to school, bringing home my report card to my father because he was a graduate of Emmaus High School oh, back in 
19... 19 uh, something like that and was he was also a musician he played the violin and uh, that was a great outlet for me because I started singing I had a solo in fourth grade that my teacher got me involved in and when I came up to junior high we had uh, oh little programs that uh, we had different things that I could enjoy being with other students and enjoying being on the stage. Yeah, and I think looking at that, like, so you're saying, like, you were trying to get yourself ingrained into the school, trying to figure out how to, like, become a part, feel a part of Emmaus High School. I was able to see from that yearbook in 1949 some of the stuff you were involved with during that freshman year. And, you know, even today we talk to freshmen about being involved, trying to, you know, now, like in your graduating class, it said there was 158 members of the graduating class of 1949. Oh, I thought it was 154. Maybe. I don't know. That's I saw what I have, 154. <laughs> so give or take a couple people there. Um, but now we have about six to 700 kids that are graduating. We have about 2,900 kids in our school. So we always talk about how to get yourself involved and kind of find those spots. So you were talking about your musical um, you know, prowess there. So it said two of the musical things that it said you were a part of as a freshman were the glee club and chorus. So do you remember anything about being a part of those two activities? Well, actually, yes. We had a freshman minstrel. And of course, they asked anyone who wanted to sing a solo or do something dancing or whatever. And of course, I was a soprano soloist. I sang, I can't believe to tell you something like that and we stood out there on the stage in the evening a couple times and that was a great thing and I was involved in a, a sextet I believe that I sang with my stu other students and that was great because we got the stage feeling and of course um, oh my brain is going where as I got used to the freshman year and got to know how everything ran, and of course getting to know the different teachers uh, kind of helped, but I, I still felt a bit isolated. But uh, in time, as we got used to the procedures that we had to follow, I became a little more comfortable. Did, uh, looking back on it, did the high school, like, help you in any way to, like, transition from that 8th to ninth grade year? Or was it basically like, you're on your own, kid, here's high school, and, you know, figure it out on your own? I'd say more of the last thing you said. Uh, and being a girl, there were a lot of fellas in our, my class down there who didn't know what they wanted to do. And they, too, were at kind of odds uh how to proceed a lot of them left high school because I think at that age they could leave and maybe get a job for their family too because like I say they, it was rough times and uh, things were changing all the time that you almost felt better stick to what you have and try and make the best of it. So you, you were talking about you joined that, the minstrels group there. And I know that you said that, you know, we're talking about like kind of that, what was going on in the world around you. In your yearbook in 1949, because you were on the yearbook and you were the class treasurer. So, you know, you did get yourself involved and you said you were the treasurer all the way through. So you had a little bit of a little mini thing at the beginning of the yearbook. And it talked about that Welcome Home Minstrel show in your freshman year and and how it was kind of like this, like almost not necessarily bittersweet thing, but you know, it was focused on was like people returning back from the end of World War II. So what was that like, like at that point, you know, you had talked about it a little bit earlier, but like we're trying now to get the sense of what it was like to be a freshman in, in, in that year. And you're dealing with the, how to be a freshman, you're dealing with high school, and you're also dealing with all of these world events and, um, when we talked to Doris, she talked to us about like how people from the community were going into the war or people were coming yes. back. So I'm sure there was a lot of people in your just immediate, even maybe in the high school or 
people that you knew that were involved in the war. So what was that like for you as a freshman, you know, talking about that show and then just kind of balancing those two things out? Well, to balance out my high school, I had to balance out my family situations too because I had many uncles, at least six uncles that were called into the service. And I, my mother was very upset because some of them were her brothers. And of course, my father's brother had to go into the service. And of course, that hung over a lot of the things that were going on uh, at the time. And somehow you felt, I'm lucky to be here in the United States when friends might die overseas and my uncles might have a problem. It, it became, even as a young teenager, I guess I was a teenager, uh, it became overwhelming. And we tried to do the best we could. And I'm assuming like today with our students, there's a lot of focus on like mental oh. health and those kinds of things. Like, was that even a conversation of that time period? Or was it kind of like what we talked about earlier, where it was like, you kind of suffer in silence and you just kind of do what you need to do to, to get by? Or was there like actually like people at the school that you could talk to to like get that support or, or even people in the community? Well, I think that came later in high school. I had a wonderful teacher, an English teacher, and she seemed to be more down to earth and uh, we could talk to her. But some of the other teachers, of course, were there to teach their subject and you were there to learn. Uh, and they had their own personal issues, I'm sure they did. But it was difficult as a, a young person uh, who was dealing with the trauma at home and then having to come to high school and try and focus on what you wanted to do with your life. Yeah, I can imagine. Like, we, we have so many issues with that now. Yes. I could just imagine how that was then because you have, you know, like you're saying, you had multiple family members involved in the war. You know, you are, you already, when you start high school, you have this understanding that you're going to basically be going through high school in order to get a job to help support your family, to help support things that are going on. So that's a heavy burden for a 14, 15 year old to kind of take on right as you're kind of entering high school, so. Yes, and as I remember, we had to collect tin cans and flatten them and take them up to a certain point where they were making them into whatever they were doing with those tin cans. They were helping the army and doing something with them artillery or whatever and my father did I say this before was part of the civic organization and he would have to put a belt with a gun on and go up to the Lincoln High School uh, Lincoln Junior High School and stand on the roof looking for planes that might be coming into our area so it, it was all we were all affected by what was going on and not knowing what was going to happen, even though it, it turned out that we were never bombed or attacked. Do you remember, like today, like we have at the high school, we do like fire drills yes. and like preparedness drills. Yes. And like, did they have drills like that while you were in high school? Like what would, what would that look, kind of look like? We did, and I believe we gathered in the gymnasium, which of course that's where my ninth grade class homeroom class was right next to the gymnasium and i believe we all had to gather down in the basement the, all the way down and well it was underground to begin with i believe and well our gymnasium got water in it and of course we had to play basketball and do our gymnastics on a uh on even surface oh Years ago, things were not as ideal as they are today, even though I know you have your problems. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Like, we're talking about, like, at the high school now and then the whole district of, you know, we're expanding so much. We need more space. Like, we're looking yes. at the high school. Like, our, high school, our high school gym is the smallest and in our area. you have a swimming pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would assume that you did not have a swimming pool. Oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> our swimming pool was down in the gymnasium trying to... Oh, trying try. to trying to keep it dry. <laughs> yeah, our kids now complain about swimming, but now it's you know, 
I think we have it as it's everyone has to take it at the high school because we have a pool. And like when you look back, not, you know, not every class of kids had the uh, the luxury of having a pool. Well, my daughter enjoyed the pool because she was in, <laughs> what do they call that class? And she excelled in that. In aquatics. In aquatics, yeah. yes. So, yeah. So, so it's really interesting to kind of hear that, like at the beginnings of your high school career, like kind of what you were dealing with. Did that improve like throughout your your time at Emmaus High School or was did that kind of always hang over like everything that kind of happened like you know the war ended in like 1945 but you know you were there till 1949 was there still this like sense of like all that kind of stuff while you were going all the way through high school? Well, I'll tell you, I had very good friends and the things that the school provided for their students, uh, by the clubs that were in Emmaus, they, they had the women's club, and we had dances every Saturday night. And even our schools, we got together and we planned Halloween parties. We had many other activities that I just loved, and it kept us happy because we had very little else going on. Yeah, I noticed, I noticed in like the, the write-up in the 1949 yearbook, it talked about... There was it was very um, prideful about all the dances and the social yes. and the social or the social things that the class did because it talked about like um, I think it was maybe I forget which year it was but there was a very specific thing about the val- a Valentine's Day dance and yes. like it was really neat to see that because at the at the school now we do like two dances and then like our prom and then the um, the senior ball so they don't have that like i think that's interesting like looking back like that the school had something for you almost like on a weekly basis like to as a social event um now we have a hard enough time trying to do it like twice a year but it's kind of neat to see that that was something that they did well i think the smaller class helped yeah you know you didn't have to deal with throngs of kids wanting to come in yeah uh and we all took advantage of it. We loved dances, and we ha- had programs in Lyceum that uh, were very promising to us as to what the future was looking out there for us. So they gave us encouragement, I will say that. And we had a wonderful uh, music teacher, Pop Peters was his name, and he was there at the high school for many, many years. And uh, he had different programs that the music kids could get involved and I think that carried us through I really do it gave us a glimmer of what life can be so it's interesting like we talk about now like a lot of times kids won't necessarily remember the math class or the English class but they will remember these extracurricular activities and and things like that and I think for someone like you you're talking about the music um, how that was a huge part Um, we're going to talk about some other things you were involved with as well too, but just those kinds of things that the, uh, that were in addition to your academic stuff, I think seem to really make an impact on, on you personally, because it was like, kind of like a way for you to get away from all the other stuff. Yes. So some of the other things, so I, I, I did this with Doris and I thought it was fun. So I, I, I did the same thing. So I printed out your 1949 your book bio which i always think is funny because well, we've we did our own by our we took a friend and she did mine and i did hers okay so that's that's really funny because now in our yearbook they don't have anything like this so um the first thing that i think is really funny is that they list your address in the yearbook and i know that's because that was a way for people to get in contact with other people right. um we talked about like how th- you know, now we were always in communication with everybody, but back then people didn't have that way of communicating. So like, I know when we talked to Dora, she said they didn't even have like phones in their classrooms. And I don't even know if that. Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> and at home, you, it, you were lucky to get a party line. Yeah. And if you've lifted up the phone and wanted to call, there's usually somebody on, you had to wait till they were finished. <laughs> <laughs> so just knowing the address was really, was funny. So, so I'm going to read you your, your bio here that your friend wrote oh, for dear. you in this senior year. <laughs> so, uh, Ruth Wenner, you were known as Ruthie as the nickname. So actually I was not, I oh. was known as Ruth. She put that in. I, we had another Ruth oh, okay. in our class and she wanted to be Ruthie. 
<laughs> and I said, I'll be Ruth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So it says that you were charming and attractive. Describe this lass who was chosen queen of our junior prom. Ruthie, an all-around gal, has led our cheering section at athletic functions and is fond of dancing and singing. Her future is bound to be a success due to her ability to make and keep friends. So would you say that that was an accurate representation of you in your high school days? That was a very kind. And of course, the gal that wrote that was a good friend of mine. And we knew each other from first grade on up. Uh, actually, yes, I think that would describe me. It's what made me tick. Yeah. So I, I really like the, uh, the, the prom queen thing. So how did that come about as a junior prom queen? That was a shock. Um, I never, ex I was on the committee, of course, because I was an officer. And of course, I think at that time, the senior class had everyone vote in our 10th, 11th grade. It just was a shock. I was <laughs> with a boyfriend, of course, at our prom. And of course, me being an officer, I had to help in the festivities. And they even called me back, oh, you have to walk in the uh, procession, because there were, I think, five or six of us that had been nominated. And truly, it never fazed me <laughs> that I would be chosen. And yet, my boyfriend was excited, and my friends were excited, and I looked at some of my other friends that didn't make it, and I, I was a little uneasy. That's, but it's really interesting, though, that like you, you like one of the reasons I like doing this and it's like all at any age that I talk to the people about is like, you can kind of just see, and like, even just thinking back, like I can see when you're talking about like that junior prom and like, even like not knowing and then the expectation of getting it. And then even remembering what like the, the, the looks on some of your friends that didn't win. Mm -hmm. I just think it's really cool to be able to look back on that experience. Do you, was there a whole lot of, so I assume was this at like a, the home, like a, whatever they considered like a homecoming dance or was this, uh, this was at the this junior prom. This was our prom. junior prom. Oh, it was at the, it was called the Owl's Home right there on near the triangle on any mass. Okay. Now it's a bicycle shop, I think. Oh, okay. So we're the South Mountain That's bicycle where we shop. had our junior prom. Oh. <laughs> and we had an orchestra up on the band stage. It, it was fat, something we had not had before. It was all a wonderful thing that we could go to. We got in evening gowns or our boys wore t ties and everything. I'm getting a little excited here. <laughs> but, uh, it was fantastic. It really was. But I was shocked. I think it kind of spoiled my evening. <laughs> now, you didn't come back and win senior. You weren't the, was it, was there the same thing for a senior prom as well, too? No. No, so somebody, somebody rose up through the ranks and beat you out for that one? You never ran. <laughs> you were chosen. You were just chosen. So was, people yeah. would vote on something. Who would you like to be junior prom? And they would check off. Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah, there wasn't like a whole thing where you oh, had to, no. no, and we didn't have many people. Oh, uh, that yeah. 154, I thought. <laughs> so would you then? Would you also say too that, you know, looking back on it, like, I like <laughs> your future is bound to be a success due to your ability to make and keep friends. Has that been a skill that you've been able to? Because obviously, when I met you for the first time at the uh, historical society, we just kind of started talking and very quickly, you know. I got to learn a lot about you in that like brief conversation. So it seems like something that you have literally kept with you for your, <laughs> for your life from that point. I developed that. I think, uh, through the years, I somehow was cheering. That was my life. I loved being a cheerleader and I met the senior, the, the gals that were in the class above me and I fell in with them and somehow st stayed with them all my life. We had a card club that was all the older gals. Actually, our card club was called 48 plus one. Oh. And I was the one, because oh, I was right. the 49er. Yeah. And we traveled all around the country. Uh, as we got older, we had a card club for probably 60 years that would meet once a month, even while we were raising our f children and keeping our husbands happy. Uh, that was the best thing in life for me, getting to know those people in high school. In high school, 
really changed my life. Yeah, and I remember when we spoke at the Historical Society, you had mentioned to me that you were a cheerleader. That was one of the things that you mentioned to me at that point yes. because we were looking at some of the memorabilia that was there at the Historical Society that you know detailed some of the cool things about Emmaus Pass, and you were remembering those days as a cheerleader. And then I know that you were, I think a, you were talking to somebody else about being a cheerleader too. So I, I, from just those brief conversations, I know how much that meant to I you did. and kind of were able to kind of do that. And that's one of the other things that I, I found in that 1949 yearbook was another article um, that had you in it. And it says, uh, cheerleaders direct school spirit. And uh, it just talked about the role of the cheerleaders in the, you know, the sporting events now. And, um, uh, of course, I have a soft spot for this. My daughter, who we talked about before, like before we started, she's in middle school. She's a cheerleader as well, oh. too. So, so it, I'm sure cheer has changed a little bit from it when you. It changes your life. Yeah, it does. and it's you know you can see like her and with the teammates and developing that confidence as well too. So, at the time, what do you remember? Did you cheer only at like sporting events, or was it like? Now, like my daughter does like competition cheer. So they do these big no. competitions. So you were only at games and like games. And we would go to far away games and we would always go on the same bus as the football guys oh, okay. or the basketball guys. But they put us way in the back of the bus and we had to keep quiet because they were discussing their games. But no, uh, we only, uh, and really... The cheerleaders today are much more active. I did. I learned how to do the somersault and the couple other things. I was not that athletic. <laughs> not one of our gals. She could do anything, the round-offs and stuff. But the kids nowadays, oh, my gosh, they built trapezes and all the other stuff. We didn't do that. But that's but even still, though, like just it didn't look like uh, I'm looking at the picture I'm counting about, like, about seven girls on the team there, maybe your senior year. But it just, it, you know, we look back and we think about like what high school athletics was like. And you kind of, you know, you have these ideas of like, you know, the cheerleaders there and they're like flowy cheerleader uniforms cheering on the team. And like, fantastic. It just, is, you know, it's like that old look back at like, you know, I guess Americana and it kind of fits exactly what we're thinking about. Like, you know, you're the, the cheerleader, you were the junior prom queen, but you also had these like lifelong connections with these girls that, you know, became women, like that you were able to kind of maintain and, and see through for all these years. Absolutely. You never felt above anyone else. You were just in with the group and you did what you were asked to do and you loved doing it. So I want to call want to go through your, the rest of your list here of the different things you were involved with. Um, so you were the class treasurer for all the years of high school. So if even up, we just had our seventy fourth reunion. So what is as, as the class treasurer now? What is your role in all the reunion stuff? Well, unfortunately, all our officers have died, and Nancy Reimer, she was Nancy Wien, and she was the secretary as I was the treasurer all of our lives, and she just died this past year. And she and I started the, getting together all the class reunions, and now it has fallen on me. But there are very few of us left anymore. Yeah, when I looked, I found a picture of your <laughs> of your, <laughs> you? of your 70th class reunion, which, again, yes. when you put numbers like 70th class reunion on stuff, it's kind of funny. I counted... In the, 19, in the 2019 picture, I counted 22 people were present for that, which I, that to me at a We 70, had fantastic class reunions. I was going to say at a 70th high school reunion to have 22 people, that, that's pretty good. And, and it, that was one of the things that we also talked about with Doris that I think like doesn't necessarily translate to kids now. There's like those high, the reunions were like the way that you yes. saw everybody. Like they were, we they, they were big deals. Yeah. Cause like I, my high school, I, I went to a small high school, not around here and ours are like every five years because they want to try to bring back like groups of people at a time. And even then that's like, they don't get a lot of people for those. But I think that like high school reunion for, for your age and like kind of going through was like such a huge social part of what they did. So. Well, now years ago we had them every five years, but yeah. then when we came to our 50th year, we decided we had such fun fun together and we had different areas that we went to 
uh, after the 50th, we decided we were going to get together every year, and we did, and had many successful reunions. Yeah, it's so it's so cool to hear that. So class, so that was you know. So now as the class treasurer, you're in, in all the reunion stuff. Um, you were an editor of the yearbook, um, feature editor at one point. Uh, there's something it's called High Jeff, which is a typist. So I don't, is that like a group? Uh, we had a newspaper that came out every month, I think. And of course I love typing, but that was before the electric typewriter <laughs> or the computer. But I love typing and of course I signed up for that and I helped type up the High Jeff paper. So that was like the school, was it like the school newspaper at the time? Yes. Or was it like, okay. Yes, it was called Hi Jeff. So what, any particular reason? That's like a weird, it sounds like a weird name. They asked for, ty oh, hi, because our school at that time was Jefferson School. Okay, so. Just like uh, the Lincoln School was called the Lincoln School. Yep. Washington School was called the Washington School. That was Jefferson School. Oh, uh, so, okay, so that makes sense. That was then. our high school. Okay. All right, so you were the the student newspaper typist, which I think is is fun. Uh, you have you were a cheerleader. You were the Glee Club, which we talked about the chorus. Um, you were in the Monitor Club. So do you remember yes. what the Monitor Club is? Yes, uh, that was to you had a position you had to assume when classes changed. Even at that time, we had a lot of students that came to high school, and. I was, I guess with my cheerleader business, I joined the monitor club to kind of keep peace in the halls because there were a lot of young men that were always doing stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will tell you that there, it's not just men anymore, but there are still a yes, lot of- Yes, women lot of, have come into their own. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of young people doing not great things in our hallways too. And Doris mentioned that as well too. And I think that's really fun that like- Did she they, really? Well, she, yeah, she, cause she was in the monitor club as well too. And I wanted to, I asked her, and I just think it's really interesting that they had a group of students that monitored the halls, not just, you know, now we have like paid hall monitors to do that, but it was like on the students to kind of police, for lack of a better word, police themselves in the hallway to kind of keep the order and keep things in check. Well, I think that started with me in first grade. I was a safety monitor and I was so proud to wear this safety thing over my chest because when school would let out at lunchtime, of course, most of us went home for lunch uh, during our high school and younger years. We didn't have the assets of a cafeteria or one that we could afford to pay for. So uh, it kind of became something I did from first grade on. And when I was asked to join the monitor club in high school, yes, I can do that because I got to know a lot of the students. Yeah, it's a way to be social. And as an aside, I was also a safety monitor when I was in grade school. There you go. Because I was at a small Catholic school and we did not have a cafeteria either. And a lot of the students live within range of walking home. So I was exactly. so I walked home for lunch myself. I was the I remember I had the orange badge as well. So I remember I remember those days of being I again, that's not anything they ask students to do these days, but that's another one of those cool memories of being part of that. So we have three more clubs that you were a part of. Oh boy. Um you were part you were the vice president actually at notes of the knitting club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was. <laughs> well, I did want it because we were making squares, I think. I, we learned that probably up at Washington School. And we were doing it for the war, what was it called? The war effort. Uh, because they were making, you would knit squares. And then when you would turn them in, they would, could make these large covers for people that were affected by the war and perhaps lost their homes. And uh, that was something we could do for the war effort. And I believe that's why I took the advanced knitting class. I even learned to crochet, I think. <laughs> wow. So that was a cl that was an actual class as well, too. Yes. Yeah. It was interesting. Was, was, as I was looking through the yearbook, there was a there was one of the pages and it had like um, it was like a, what we call now family consumer science, but it had like the girls at the top 
were doing something. And then there was a huge section and it made a big deal about how the boys were learning how to cook. So I just think it's really funny. Like, we, again, when you look back, this is in their, your school yearbook of like, we're promoting guys that can cook. <laughs> and now like, it's kind of expected that everyone kind of knows all those skills, but it, it seemed like at the time it was like kind of one of those big deals that we're going to focus. We're going to highlight like, we're teaching guys how to cook. So I think it's always fun when you look at stuff like that for the knitting club as well with those things. So two more. Uh, then that, the next one, this it was called the Varsity E-Club. Well, that was uh, an honor to be in the Varsity E-Club. And somehow I wasn't there when they took the picture for the Tatler. Uh, because I was a cheerleader for and belonged to the Varsity E-Club for so many years, I earned a sweater. We all got green and gold varsity sweaters, and we could put our E emblem on it. And that was such a proud moment that we could uh, support our school and say, I'm from Emmaus, and we were very proud to be from Emmaus. So that would be like the equivalent of like when the students today get like the big varsity letter jackets kind of? where like Probably kind of, the same situation, same. It just grew and grew. Yeah. You know? But they actually, it was called, it was like a, like a group. Like yes. A, so that's, that's kind of neat. That would you be. You had to be uh, qualified to join that class or club. Oh, cool. And it was an honor. Yeah. That sounds like something like I, when, when I do this, I kind of always look and be like, oh, could, is there any like Emmaus tradition? Like, cause I feel like a lot of times the students, like we're trying to get the students to feel connected to the school right. and like maybe sometimes they don't, but when you see something like that, like that's kind of something cool that like, I don't know if we do something like that now or could we even bring something like that back? So that's- You that. have too many students. <laughs> we would have a lot of varsity e-club members. Yes. And then here's the last one. And this one, I don't know hmm. what it would be. Uh, it's in quotation marks. It's called the Piccaninny Parade. Was that a performance of some kind? Yes. Piccaninny Was Parade. I think it had to do with my freshman freshman year. Uh, well, it says second year, so I would assume your second sophomore year. year. Okay. Well, like I said, I was very musical. Yeah. And anything that pulled you in, I was there. And probably we did some kind of show. We had a wonderful guy that graduated ahead of me. He was just probably then a junior when I was a sophomore. His name was Neil Klein. And he had a group of singers and dancers that performed in, not only in Emmaus High School, but in Emmaus and all the communities around. And I happened to be in a trio at that time, I think. Yes, three gals. And we kind of joined whatever was going on with this piccaninny yeah. business. So maybe that's why I have that in there. I don't know why it's in there. Well, it's 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 in there. So for for all of eternity, you are listed as uh, somebody that was in the Piccaninny Parade. <laughs> look, looking back on it, so we've been able to go through a lot of different stuff, and I really appreciate you kind of going back through all You're the really memories. Really making me think. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, sorry. I guess you know. I guess my role as a teacher. I guess that's what I have to do during the day, whether you're a student or not. So I guess you're always a student here. Um, so as we're kind of winding down here, I often like to ask like. It, as you kind of have gone, you know, gone through life here, like, have you noticed like a huge change in what you think high school is like for students? Or if you had any of your own children that went through high school, did you notice like a change in like what high school meant to kids? Like, obviously the technology is different. We, we know that, but like, do you think the core of high school is still the same for when you went to high school to when kids today are in high school? I have no idea what the kids are going through in high school today. Certainly my husband and I had a son and daughter and uh, they both graduated from Emmaus High School. Of course, then it was East Penn, I think. And uh, both have wonderful careers. So evidently, whatever they learned in high school, of course, my daughter has her college degrees uh, she has her master's, and my son has has his own business that he's developed, and uh, had had both of them are had wonderful careers. 
So uh, I feel grateful for that, along with my husband. Of course, I lost my husband 30 years ago, but we had 40 years of marriage, and uh, we were blessed. Did you meet at Emmaus High School? We did. We both went to Emmaus High School, but I was dating other men, (laughs) other (laughs) young boys at the time. Uh, He, unfortunately, had to repeat first grade because he got blood poisoning in his arm, and his mother kept him home from school. So he was one year in back of me. So when it came time, I graduated, and he was still in high school for the senior ball, which was one of our big dances. Somehow he asked me to go, and we used to dance together at different dances, but like I said, I was interested in other guys at the time. (laughs) And uh, that kind of started our history. So uh, your your 40-year marriage love story began at the senior ball at Emmaus High School. Uh, maybe, maybe a little longer, but yes, it kind of opened the door. That's that's really cool, though, that you can kind of trace that back to that the high school to that high school moment. <laughs> he was a good-looking man. He was football, basketball, into sports, and of course, that's what I loved. And uh, so, even as you were, so I assume he was playing while you were cheering, and there was no, nothing. You were no. just kind of just all over the place and never never had your eye on them during all those times? No. I, like <laughs> I said, I was interested in someone else. <laughs> so the last question that I'll ask you here, and we, we haven't mentioned your age, but, you know, if people can kind of figure out, like, how kind of old you are. Um, but I asked Doris the same question as, like, so you've – you know, you've gone through high school and you've lived a, a long and, and successful life here. If you were to offer a piece of advice to our current ninth grade students, and it doesn't have to be something about specifically about their ninth grade right now, but if you could offer them one piece of advice that you would say, like, as you're going through, maybe this would be important for you to keep in mind or to keep, you know, that maybe a guiding principle or something that could help you to get through everything. What would you say is the most important lesson that you could pass on to them? Well, truthfully, now that we've talked so much about this, ninth grade was a turning point for me and perhaps for you students because the world, as certainly as we know now, it's changing all the time and you are affected whether you're 15, 16, 19, or whatever, you are affected. Try to make the best of things because, like I say, the world is changing all the time and you never know what you're going to be faced with. So be brave and take in what you can and good luck. (laughs) It's a great way to end it. So I, you know, I appreciate you taking time out of your day here to talk to me, to share some of these great stories. And again, like, as I said to Doris, like just the opportunity to hear, um, you know, from the past of Emmaus and from our community and to be able to kind of get these ideas down for people to be able to see and hear. I think it's so cool to be able to share these. So uh, hopefully we brought back some good memories for you from all your high school days. (laughs) And we really appreciate you taking the time out to join us today. It was interesting. Thank you so much. (laughs) And very nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us on today's episode. For all of our previous episodes, go to www.ninthgradeexperience.com.